Woo! Okay, welcome, little boys, little girls. I don't know why you guys are little people. Welcome back to the Danger Zone podcast. I'm your host, Albert Danger Kim, and today it's just a solo dolo podcast with just me. It's just you, me, this microphone, and no clothes for the next half hour as I rent for the next 30 minutes about what are we talking about today? We're talking about the New Year's. So um, I hope everyone had a nice holiday. I just got done with the holiday rush over at work. Working in retail during the holiday season is no joke, as you guys who are working in retail will know. It's a fucking zoo. But glad that's over, you know? And that holiday bonus was fat! Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it, you know, as soon as I get the paycheck, which I haven't yet. But uh, yeah, hope you guys had a good holiday. Hope you had presents. Hope you ate a lot of food. Hope you got fat off that. And because you got fat off that, you're going to be making them... Uh, them New Year's resolutions, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? And because you know, you, you could just you can just gorge yourself right now because you know that in a week you're gonna be gorging yourself with alcohol, waking up the following morning and be feeling like a new person. It's like a nice cleanse. So that's gonna be nice. But where am I going with this? My point is it's a holiday season. Hope you guys had a good time. I got got pretty festive this year. By festive, I mean I actually bought presents for my family. Usually it's just a, I love you, and that's that's my gift to you. But I decided to actually buy gifts. I bought my, my mom some nice stuff, my sister some nice stuff, my sister's husband some nice stuff. And of course, I learned to treat myself. I treated myself probably a little bit more than I did give presents to my family, but, you know, fuck it. I deserve it, right? We all deserve it. Go treat yourself. Do that thing. But uh, it was good. It was good being around family. Uh, I had to spend the past two Christmases uh, by myself. Uh, one, I, I celebrated that overseas. It was weird because, you know, no one really gives a shit about Christmas when, you, when you're not in America. And two, uh, the second one, I spent that with extended family that I barely even know. It was just me with a bunch of Korean people who uh, don't speak English. And then they're like, oh, Merry Christmas. I'm like, Merry Christmas. And we ate pork. And I sat there for a while trying to decipher what they were saying, and then I left. It's fun, some fun stuff. Yeah, but it's it's good to be back, celebrating it with my family. And now that it's over, um, we're going straight into the New Year's, man. Straight into New Year's. I saw this uh, this post a while back, or it, was, or it was actually not a post. This was an episode from uh, this TV show called Fresh Off the Boat. We were talking about why why Santa couldn't be, or why Santa is Asian. I forget the reason. I just saw the post on on Facebook. Someone just put one of those clickbaity titles. It was like, oh, Fresh Off the Boat shows why Santa's Asian. And I'm like, no. No way. Santa can't be Asian. I should have clicked it and read it. But honestly, Santa can't be Asian. Santa has to be a white dude. And it's not because, you know, it's got to be exclusive to just white people. But because it wouldn't make any sense if Santa was, was Asian. It wouldn't, it wouldn't work out. Things wouldn't work. Santa be blowing a lot of a lot of dough and like making sure that all the kids are happy on Christmas. Your Asian parents or just being Asian in general, you you know something something would be wrong with those toys, right? Timmy be asking for the action figure of fucking Kylo Ren. What he would get would be the action figure of Kylo Ren with lead in it. If he was if he was Chinese Santa. That'd be fucked. There'd be some fuckery going on. Not to mention, Chinese Santa wouldn't even have elves. You know why? Because the Chinese people would probably work for cheaper than the elves. And probably more efficiently. So he would just, instead of having Santa's workshop, you'd have Santa's fucking sweatshop with a bunch of Chinese dudes. So you'd eventually all the, all the nice romantic ideas of Christmas would be gone. You'd just be left with a bunch of Chinese people in sweatshops making your toys. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. That is what's going on. Oh, truth bomb. I don't know. That, wow. Wow. It was a was rant about Santa and it, it ended up dropping some truth. Yeah. Uh, I hope you guys were prepared for that. And I hope you guys are enjoying your new gifts with a good conscience. <laughs> oh, my God. What am I saying? Um, yeah. But 
Santa, Santa does exist. He's out there somewhere. He's, he's a white dude. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. You, you disagree? Say something. Fuck with me. Make an argument. I did. It came out on top. But, uh, yeah. Christmas is over. Yeah, it's done. Gift wrapped is in the trash. People ate a lot. Families left for the weekend. And going back home. And now we're just left with New Year's. And now it's New Year's. Everyone likes to make these great grand resolutions, right? It's the new year. It's the new me. I'm going to do it right this year. I fucked... 2015 was so fucked. I'm going to make it right for 2016. Is what goes on in my head and most people around this time. And I, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. Because honestly, I it just pisses me off. This 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 season. I mean, I like Christmas. Christmas is nice. You get to be around family. But then as soon as you get around to New Year's, it's like this... This bitter melancholy when you go over and you review the previous year, right? Because everything's 2020 in hindsight. So you look back and you're like, oh, fuck. Could have done that better. Could I could not have hurt so-and-so. I could not have fucked up that job interview. I could not have ran over my girlfriend's dog. You know, just random things like that. You just go over and you just go over in your head. And you're like, fuck, I fucked up 2015. I got to do it right this year. Or maybe you're on the other side and you're just fucking not doing anything. You didn't fuck up. You just didn't do anything. And so you, you're making the decision right now. You're saying, okay, 2016 is it. I'm going to just do it. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. And it could be many things. Losing weight. You can be uh, quitting your job, getting a new job, traveling. You could be, I don't know, fucking switching from Apple to Android. You know, picking anything. But what, what pisses me off about this is that People like to declare it, you know? Like, they like to declare their New Year's resolutions. And I don't really know why. I think, one, because it would, they want to be held accountable. Like, people will see it and go, oh, good job. You can do it, man. And then also, they like to do it because they they just want the attention. And I'm guilty of it, too. But, you know, you would like to make these grand resolutions and be like, hey, I'm going to do something. I'm going to make it fresh. And whether it be media, which it probably is. Or just social reinforcement. It's just how everyone thinks about the New Year's. It's like a fresh new start. A new you. Unless you committed murder. In which case you're probably held accountable in the court of law. But with everything else, it's a fresh start, right? You can you can do it. If you want to lose that 20 pounds, you can drop it. If you want to have a baby, you can have a baby. If you, uh, if you want to buy that car or save up and buy that car, this is going to be the year. If you want to learn to ride that bicycle, it's the new year. Fuck it. You can do it. It's, uh, you know, it's just, it's the time. It's the time to make these resolutions. And that's why for people who go to the gym, you go to the gym on January 2nd or if it's the weekend, a fucking Monday. And then all of a sudden there's this influx of people there. You can't use the machine. It's like a theme park. You got to wait two hours to use the squat rack or just any weight. Or you, there's no, there's no room to just stand in front of a mirror. And granted, it's nice. It's nice to see people working hard. You know, I like seeing people putting in the effort but then what just just fucking destroys me is that just how gung-ho people are and then how quickly they fall off of it and it's just it's just a cycle it's a cycle and one thing i just really hate seeing is just cycles cycles of things that people do and they don't they're not even conscious of it but new year's resolutions is one of them and i know this is a big rant but fuck it i want to rant about it so here you go i'm dishing it out this is the danger zone for a reason man fuck it just gonna make fun of people who make these resolutions. I'm guilty of it too. It's not like I've never made these fucking resolutions. I do it all the time. It's you know recently stopped because fuck it, it's all an illusion, right? Because if you think about it, you can just make a resolution at any point. Why does it have to be the new year? Tomorrow could be your new year. Fucking, it could be April. It could be your new year. You could just make a resolution to just stop whatever it is. Stop smoking. Stop being a douchebag. Uh, read more books, fucking eat healthier, you know, go out and ask that girl out, or go ask that boy out, or, you know, do something, you could just do it that day, but most people just, I mean, it's great, because New Year's is an instigator, I guess, but fuck it, you could just do it any day, right, it's all an illusion, so yeah, I stopped doing the whole, like, oh, this year, I'm a blah, 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 insert thing, I've just stopped doing it, 
because it's fucking useless. You just gotta just pick a day and just work through it. It's a, it's what it is, is an influx of motivation, and people ride this wave on January 1st. They're like, oh yeah, let's make a toast, and they do it, and then it just kind of fizzles out. I mean, any, any kind of declaration with, with just a ride of a motivation is gonna fizzle out, right? So, you're gonna, you're gonna encounter days where you just don't wanna do it. You're just not gonna want to do it. You're just gonna wake up and be like, "Fuck it, I've done it for two weeks, and I deserve a day off. I'm not gonna do it. Work was hard. I had a shitty day. I'm just not gonna do that thing that I said I was gonna do for today. And then it happens the next day, and the day after that, and all of a sudden you're not doing it anymore. And it's because you can't let a, like you can't write a feeling to do something. You just gotta keep working at it until it becomes a habit, even when you don't want to do it. I'm just going to pick a, pick a random thing and, for example, exercise, right? Nobody fucking... I mean, eventually you learn to like it, but fuck. It, it, exercise is one of those weird activities where it, it sucks when you do it, but also it feels really good at the exact same time because, one, you're accomplishing something, and two, you just, you, you know, your, your mind or your brain gives off the endorphins and you feel great afterwards, you know, the runner's high. Like... But you still got to suffer through it, right? You're still gritting your teeth and going, fuck, why am I doing this when I could be at home jerking off and watching, I don't know, fucking a movie. Watching Star Wars over and over again, right? So you, it's, it sucks, but if you just ride the motivation wave, especially when, if you're not accustomed to physical activity, it's just going to fizzle out. It's going to fizzle out. Especially And same thing with a diet, right? You put in the effort to eat healthy. And so like you, for a couple of weeks, you're like, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna eat just green, just nice, nice veggies. Not gonna touch the the donuts. Not gonna be drinking too much coffee. And then you're gonna have a really stressful day. And then be like, you know, fuck it, treat yourself. And then, boom, down the coffee. Eat eat the fucking sweets. Eat the candy. And it's just you're back at square one. And it's falling off that that really like. I start to see that, and I, I also did it myself. Like, I'm not I'm not trying to be like, oh, I can do it, and other people don't do it. And that's not not the point. It's just the mentality that I have a problem with. And I've done like you fall off, and like I when I went through that same mentality of, oh, it's the new year, let's change it, let's change it now. It would just I would fall off all the time. And it wasn't until I realized that you, you know to build to do these things that you want to do. It's what you really want to be focusing on is building strong habits and how do you build strong habits you got to work at something no fucking matter what for like i think i think the the scientific because you know they can break this down to a science nowadays is 30 or 20 like 21 or more days so like around a month if you do something for around a month it starts you start to build a habit but that that's only if you do it consecutively like you can't just bitch out like halfway and then expect it to build a habit you have to consecutively do it for about about three weeks and eventually it would just become a habit and from there it gets it just gets easier but at the same time you can't you can't let yourself just drop off like there are these waves you can't you can't have these waves of motivation and then just not do that thing anymore you got to just keep at it just go so basically this if you if you listen to this podcast don't fucking don't fucking wait to january 1st don't do that just you know this is this is gonna be dropped on the 20 was it the 20 it's gonna be the 27th today, so it's gonna be it's gonna be dropped on the 29th. You do it the 29th. Why you gotta wait till January 1st? Just fucking pick up that guitar if you want to learn guitar. Fucking start learning guitar. Let's pick it up, strum those chords, build the calluses, do that thing if that's what you want to do. If you want to lose weight, go fucking lose weight. Do that thing. Don't wait till January 1st, and just, especially it's not gonna help if you go out drinking the night before. But you know you can do all these things if you want to quit smoking, if you want to quit drinking, if you want to quit people. Who annoy you. You can do that anytime. Just fucking drop it. Do it that day. And fucking just do it. Do it. Just fucking do it. That's that's the whole thing. Just doing it. That's all that's important. And then just build a healthy habit. And it gets easier from there. I think um, uh, when I was browsing the interwebs. I came across this really cool uh, saying that this one guy said. That makes it kind of easier. Because... When you're when you when you're building a new habit, especially one that sucks, like it really sucks. Like for example, if you're quitting smoking, it it's so hard. It's gotta be so hard. I mean, I've never done it personally, but I mean, for people who are quitting like a drug or something like that, it is very hard. Especially if you're addicted. So 
when you when you're quitting something like that, you're always constantly thinking about, oh, I've made it this far, but I I I, I what about that day I I don't I don't make it, I don't pull it through, and I smoke that cigarette or I have that drink. And one, you gotta be kind to yourself. You know, you gotta just be like, okay, it's fine. Even if I do fuck up, it's okay. But at the same time, what makes it easier is not having a 99% mentality. Like I do it most of the time, but then that one exception, I do do it. I'm gonna fall off the wagon. It's better to just keep a 100% mentality. Just, I don't do that. Just think about it that way. And it makes things a lot easier because what you think ends up becoming your reality and how you how you act in life. So if you constantly keep a keep a mindset of just 99% of the time I'm going to do something, I'm going to fuck up, you're going to fuck up eventually. And that's not to say if you keep a 100% mentality that you're not going to fuck up. You, I mean, you always have the potential to fuck up. You're human. You fucking suck, Right? You can make errors. That's just us being us. We're not robots, man. So if you just keep that 100% mentality, all of a sudden it's not, I'm going to be not doing this thing until that one time I do do it. It's just, I don't do this thing. And it makes life so much easier. Especially if you want to cut things out of your life, you can just start saying that you just don't do it. Not that, oh, I've decided to stop doing it and hopefully I don't do it again. Just, just tell yourself, I don't fucking do that. No, that ain't me. That ain't my life. I'm I'm not about them them uh <laughs> them spanks life. You know, it just pick some something whatever is in your life that you want to get rid of, and you can just have that 100% mentality. Or vice versa, if you have something that you want to put in your life, you can just say I do this thing these days, or I do these. I go like for example, if you want to go running, say I go running at 7 a.m. Not that I think I'm gonna try to go running at 7 a.m. Just fucking just say I go running at 7 a.m every morning and then just do it just do it and then if you happen to not do it don't beat yourself up about it i feel like you (laughs) it with anything really there's like a negative and a positive feedback loop with any anything really it's it's a mindset so especially when you're trying something new and you're putting yourself out there and you're coming out of your comfort zone it's really important not to get into that negative spiral of thoughts, especially if you suck at something and you also suck at adhering to it. As long as you're putting in the effort and you're doing it and you're not stopping and you're not just doing this weird wave of like, oh, I did it, but I'm not doing it. And I feel bad about not doing it, but I want to do it again. And you do it and you don't, and you, you liked it for a second and you stopped doing it because you did it and then you feel good about doing it, but then you'd stop doing it. And you feel bad about not doing it again. And then you just keep doing that over and over again. It's just going to like rip you apart. And eventually you're not going to see much progress, right? And then when you don't see any progress, you just feel bad about it. So it just becomes this negative feedback loop of you wanting to do something, doing it, not doing it, hating yourself for not doing it, and then trying to do it again, seeing no results from not doing it, and then giving up because you, you, you keep trying to do it, and then you're not seeing any results, and it takes a lot of effort to do it. But it's not fruitating. It's not fruit. It's not fruitating. What the fuck? It's not becoming anything, and you don't really see the fruits of your labor. That's what I'm trying to say. What the fuck is fruitating? But yeah, so just try. What? Why just throwing out all this random shit uh, about what it means? What I, at least what I think it means to to try and make a healthier lifestyle, especially for 2016. If you're gonna be going out and you really want to change your life and you want to make things great for 2016, it's all just about how you approach it, you know and you got to ask yourself, am I just riding this high or am I actually fucking gritting my teeth and making a change for once? Or not just for once, you know, if I'm just going to try to make a difference this year, make a difference, especially if you, I see so many posts where people are like, yeah, this is what I thought of 2015 and this is the reality of 2015 where the picture afterwards is just some really shitty version of the, of the, of the former. So if you want it to be great, if you want it to be better, you got to, you got to make it, you got to change it up, right? You gotta make it different. What are you gonna do, son? If you just do the same shit, you're just gonna get the same stuff. I think the the quote goes: "Insanity is doing the same thing over again and expecting different results." So you gotta try it out. Try some new things, man. Also, fucking even if you're happy with what's going on, you know, keep an open mind, right? Try some new things. Like even if you're content with what's going on in life, why not try some new things? Why not try some new things? Try it out. You know, if you've never fucking danced before and you're like, you feel goofy doing it and you feel kind of naughty for moving your hips in such a rhythmic manner, why don't you take a class or, you know, just do it in your room by yourself. And if it, if you feel good doing it, then you should, you know, do it more often. And, you know, also people who are, because I know a lot of people too who, uh, who 
want to go out more, but then don't go out. But then always say that I want to go out more. Just put in the effort. Put in the effort to go out more, man. Or if you go out too much and you spend too much on alcohol, like yours truly, then you know you might want to cut back. You might want to cut back on that. That would be a good idea. This is a really big. I just I I feel like I have to keep talking to fill the empty void, and it's weird. I feel weird doing that. I think I I much rather have conversations with guests. So what what are my what, honestly what are my goals for this this year? Even though I. I said I don't want to make grand resolutions, but it is it is good to have, you know, an overall goal. Goals are nice. Dreams are nice. Goals are nice. Those are good things to have, right? So I guess I do. I have my own too, but, you know, I'm not waiting till January 1st to start. I'm just doing it now. I've been doing them, and uh, I hope things turn out better in 2016. So what do I want to do? What, what do I want to do in 2016? Hmm? Thank you for asking, right? Let me, let me, well, let me tell you. I hope to build this podcast more, you know, it's going pretty well so far, I've had two guests on it so far, and uh, I'm trying to look to see if other people will be on, want to be on the podcast, so if you want to be on the podcast, just let me know, I'll fucking, I'll put you on, we'll see, we'll see how that goes, and you get to stay in my really hot, messy room with me, and have a really weird, fucked up conversation, and we have a good time, I'll give you, I'll give you beer that's clean and safe, and we'll have a good time. You sign the form, and I put out the episode. It'll be good. So I want to get more people on this show so that I can have a, a genuine conversation where we get to the bottom of random shit like, you know, what 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 their favorite Spice Girl is or who, who their favorite... Oh, I say what? Or, you know, if, you know, childhood dreams, aspirations, you know, things like that. Just random, random topic, topic points. So I want to get more people on here so I can talk about things like that. And, um... I also want to move to LA, so I'm currently in Virginia until I sell my family home, which is proving to be a lot harder than I thought it'd be, and then hopefully in the next couple months, I want to move to LA, relocating all the way across the United States to find, I don't know, the California dream, living that life, you know, hopefully I'll be next to a beach, if I could be near a beach, oh my god, I'd be much happier, but it's weird, what the fuck's going on with this weather, because it's it's so hot. It is uncomfortably humid outside. It's winter. It's the it's it's just past the winter solstice, and it's so fucking humid and hot outside. I went outside in a t-shirt and fucking shorts today. It's it doesn't feel right. This is weird. And then you still got people who are like, this is a natural process in the world. Like the world naturally gets hotter and colder, and then it just you know it, it evens out. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? Granted, yeah, there are fluctuations, but what? No, you can't look outside. You can't be like, oh, you can't, you can't be playing Christmas music and then going outside and, get, and then sweating. You, I can't do that. That's just not right. You can't look at this and say this is natural. It's fucking weird. I'm going to go out and say it. Fucking climate change, man. You climate change deniers. That's some fuckery. Like, you want, you want case in point? You want exhibit A? Go outside with a snowball and see... Oh, oh, that's right. You can't find a snowball because it's fucking 70 degrees outside. And then... Go out with an ice cube then and just, just see if it melts. And I guarantee fucking tea it gonna melt because it's so hot outside. Shit. I gotta start wearing deodorant again. Oh shit, did I say that out loud? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's fucking hot. It's really hot outside, man. So it I would want to be in nicer weather, but it's our, what am I saying? Like, I feel like I'm gonna go to California and it's gonna be cold there like it is now. And then it's gonna be warm over here and it's just gonna switch. That would suck. But... Yeah, hopefully, hopefully Cali life has something in store for me. That's just me, though. But, um, yeah, what I also want to do is if you guys give me feedback on what you want me to ask future guests, like questions, questions for me and also questions for other people. You can also tweet them at me at my Twitter handle, Elber da- at Elber Danger Kim on Twitter, and I'll answer them on the podcast. Fuck, I'll even answer it on the Facebook page if you want. So just tweet me that and um, I'll do that, too. But uh, this is just a solo cast of, you know, my random thoughts about Christmas and my random thoughts about, you know, New Year's resolutions, grand resolutions, and uh, things like that. But, you know, I'm you know I'm just joking around, right? You know, and all this stuff that I'm saying, granted, are my, my views, but none of it's fucking serious, really. Honestly, you can do whatever the fuck you want. If you want to make a grand gesture and say, hey, fuck it, I'm going to be a dragon for 2016 and go out and try and be a dragon... You know, not not do the angry dragon, but actually be a fucking dragon. You know, you just go out and do it. 
go LARP. Be that dragon. Find that girl who will let you be the dragon in bed or find that boy who will let you be the dragon in bed and do that thing. It doesn't really matter. You know, nothing really matters. It's just, you know, I just see these things and it pisses me off and just, I just want to get it out. You got to get it out. Because if I don't get it out, little children get beat. And, you know, if you don't want little children to get beat, you should just really just endure listening to this crap on the podcast. Think of the children. Just think of all the helpless children that I'm going to destroy with me, my man fists. These giant man fists. It wouldn't even be fair. They wouldn't stand a chance. It would just be like smashing a potato. But not like a not like an uncooked potato. I'm talking about smashing like a, a mashed potato. I would just like slap, slap with bare, like open handed slap a potato. And it just falling apart. That's like, that's me hitting a child. I would never hit a child. But if I did have to hit a child, it would kind of, I, I would imagine it would, it would go something like that, you know, like mashed potatoes. That's kind of what I think about when I am mashing potatoes. That's, that's exactly what I'm thinking about. <laughs> what the fuck am I saying? Okay. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to, I think I've ranted enough. This that's, that's the podcast for today. Um, next time I'm going to be having my friend Angela, who is a blogger on the show. I'm going to say it now in the podcast because now she can't back down and pull out of not coming next week because then I can be like, oh, bitch, I said it on the podcast. You said you're going to come. I said it on a podcast. There's accountability here. You can't just pull out. You have to come now. So I'm saying it now. She's a writer. If she's got a blog that I'll put in the link description if you check on the, the blog posts and also um, on the YouTube link. That I'm gonna be putting up there, and also tweet it. So if you follow me on Twitter, I'm gonna be tweeting that too. And she's got a blog for millennials, you know, the best generation out there, as we're known as. And uh, it's basically about spreading positivity. You know, she's all about spreading that positive vibes, and I'm all about that too. So I'm gonna be interviewing her on the podcast for next week. And also, she's got a second blog out there right now that's about being Asian American, uh, what it means to be Asian American in America. And how, how it feels. And basically all it is is just first-hand anecdotes of people who are, various people who are Asian in America and just them telling us about what it's like being Asian, but not really Asian. Because you're Asian on the outside, right? I look Asian on the outside, but deep down, I am a, a Mexicano. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm as white as they come. Really, I'm very just, I'm, I'm, honestly, I don't feel like I adhere to a fucking race or anything you know and ethnicity i don't really don't I just see myself as a person and that's generally how i see most people and i think that's how most people should be seeing each other but you know that's what's complicated about being a certain race in america that's not white you get you get these different attributes sticked onto your forehead and then you have these really weird encounters and so that makes for a good read so there are plenty of times you know for example people assume that i know karate as they should, because I fucking know karate, and I'll fuck you up if you mess with me, alright? So, you know, it's, it's, it's situations like that, where it, it gets weird, and it's, it gets funny too. I think bef- before it gets weird, it gets funny, and because it's weird, it is funny, if that makes any sense. So, I would check out that pod, I mean, that blog that she has out too, I'll put the links in the description again, and uh, I think that's me for today, guys. Uh, short episode today, I know last week was like an hour of me ranting with my friend, uh, Phil about Asia more of that to come because I know he wants to come back to the podcast if you want him to come back to the podcast put put a message in the Facebook page saying yeah bring back Phil if you don't want Phil to come back just say fuck that guy and I'll still bring him back because I don't care about your opinions okay all right so that's the Danger Zone podcast for today this is Albert Danger Kim and uh, please go to iTunes and give us a good review on the iTunes uh, music store, please, 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 just to give this, I, you know, this podcast a little bit of publicity, if you like what you heard, and also, uh, we're on Android devices as well, so you can go on Android, uh, Google Play, and find us on there, or just any Android app, like, uh, Podcast Me, and things like that, or, um, Podcast Addict, and things like, apps like that, and you can find us on there, just give us a nice review, or subscribe to us, get us the downloads, you know, get some blue views, views, Blues? Blues clues? Give us some views, alright? You silly fucks. Just get us on uh, your phones, get us everywhere, and just tell people about the Danger Zone podcast. And I'd greatly appreciate that. That'd be cool. Thanks, guys. Gotta do the plug at the end. You know me. I'm desperate. Okay. 
Uh, you guys have a good time. See you guys next year and have a great New Year's and do many great things. All right, guys. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.